eight times 50, that's 400 times 10, that's 4,000 solder joints just for the seven segment displays. That was a lot of soldering. I am, I'm exhausted. I don't think it's a secret that I am a very big nerd. I like engineering, math, physics, and pretty much anything science related. That also means that I like celebrating things like Pi Day. Pi Day is an unofficial holiday that is meant to celebrate the mathematic constant Pi. To celebrate Pi Day this year, I wanted to build an interactive display that would show the digits of Pi. Now you might remember from high school that Pi is special in that it's an irrational number, which means that it never has any repeating digits. It just keeps going on forever and ever. I think it would be really cool to show as many digits of Pi as I possibly can using these little seven segment LEDs. The plan is to first prototype this on a breadboard. I want to be able to daisy chain these segmented displays, so I'm going to be using something called a shift register. All you need to know about a shift register is that you can send it ones and zeros and it'll store that information for you. I'll use those ones and zeros to turn on and off the appropriate segments to make the numbers. One of the cool things about a shift register is that it has an output to continue that stream of data onto another shift register and so on. So you can link these up together and store a lot of information. I've prototyped this here on the breadboard and I've proven to myself that I can actually daisy chain these together and get them to display the numbers that I want. So the next step will be to design a PCB where I can put all these components on a more permanent board. That board looks like this. I designed this board to hold eight digits and there are connectors on each end so I can link these together to make a really long chain. Altogether, I ordered 50 of these boards with eight digits each. That means there are 400 digits in total. That means I'm hoping to display 400 digits of Pi. Let's see if I can make this work. While I'm soldering these components up, I'll take a quick second to tell you about Altium Designer, which is the sponsor of today's video. Altium Designer is a professional grade PCB design environment. It represents 35 years of continuous innovation in PCB design. It has been developed for designers at every level. Altium Designer delivers the world's first and only truly connected PCB design experience in one easy to use solution. I'm really excited that Altium Designer has decided to partner with me on this video. If you'd like to take your PCB design to the next level, I would encourage you to check out Altium Designer. You can get a free trial by visiting the link in the description.
Okay, so I just finished soldering all of those little uh, surface mount components as well as all of the seven segment displays. If you can't hear my voice, I'm super tired. That was a lot of soldering. Like I said, there are 50 boards here. Um, just some quick math. I know that each of these displays has 10 solder points and there are eight times 50, that's 400 times 10. That's 4,000 solder joints just for the seven segment displays and at least that many um, on the surface mount components. So that was a lot of soldering. I am, I'm exhausted. That was a lot of work. The last step I need to do is to solder on the little connector that allows me to link these together. So that shouldn't take as long, but uh, there's still 50 of these boards. So I'm gonna try to finish that up tonight. Now that I'm done soldering all of these boards, it's time to write some code for the Arduino microcontroller. The first thing I want to do is to write some test code to make sure that everything's working on these boards before I get everything hooked up. Once I've confirmed that all of the segments are working properly, then I can start writing the code to display the number pi. If I wanted to control just a handful of these displays, it would be fine to use the built-in power supply on the Arduino board. However, my goal is to control 400 of these displays, so I'm going to use a beefier power supply like this. This one's able to supply up to 60 amps, which is way more than enough. If you want to learn how to calculate pi for yourself, there are a lot of fun and simple ways to do so. I would recommend checking out Matt Parker from the YouTube channel Stand Up Maths. If you haven't seen Matt Parker's videos, he's a comedian and he teaches math principles in a fun and interesting way. I'll have a link in the description where you can check out his channel. I've written the code that displays the digits of pi. However, I think it would be really boring to just have a static display of the numbers. I wanted this to be more of an interactive display, so the idea that I came up with is to use a hand wheel connected to an encoder. What I'm envisioning is walking up to the display and having the first digit of pi displayed, which is obviously three. I want the remaining digits to kind of scroll around in a circle, indicating that they're thinking of the next digit. Then as you crank the hand wheel, it'll start displaying those digits sequentially. Like I said, I'm gonna be using something called an encoder connected to the hand wheel. You're probably already familiar with an encoder. If you've ever turned up the volume on your car stereo, it's likely that there's an encoder behind that knob to detect the position of the knob. One of the things to consider if you're ever gonna use an encoder like this is that there are actually mechanical switches inside. One of the big issues with mechanical switches is something called bouncing. Bouncing is the word used to describe when a switch flickers on and off really fast before it settles into its on or off state. If we were to connect this encoder straight up to the Arduino, and ignore this bouncing issue, we would get a lot of errors in our reading and we wouldn't get good positional data. Luckily, the solution is pretty simple. I'll need to add a couple of resistors and a capacitor to filter out that noise and make a nice clean signal that we can use. Once I finish getting all the electronics and the code working together, I'll need to put all of this into an enclosure and install it on the wall in the garage.
If you're watching this video, chances are you have a lot of creative ideas and you like making things. I know what it's like to have a great idea, but also feel overwhelmed by not knowing where to start. My goal with Bite Size is to give you the knowledge, inspiration, and confidence to make those ideas a reality. Hopefully this project video showed you how to take a complex idea like this and break it down into more manageable pieces. If you like project videos like this, I'd recommend watching one of the suggested videos that I'll put here at the end. You should also subscribe to Bite Size and consider becoming a Bite Size supporting member either through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Supporting members get access to early release videos, behind the scenes content, and monthly video hangouts. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.